Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs, and this is Ron's Rundown. We're going to go over the MLB game scheduled for Tuesday, April 12, 2022. Now, if you like what you see, make sure to give us a big thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and leave us a comment down below with what your picks are for the games in the MLB for Tuesday. Also, if you're looking for my best bets or best bets from some of the top handicappers in the world today, be sure to check out the Premium Picks tab at PickDogs.com. Alrighty, let's get into the games for Tuesday, April 12th. For our first game, we're going to go to the ball game between the Red Sox and Tigers. The two projected starters, both lefties, Rich Hill and Tyler Alexander. Now, you know what you're going to get for Rich Hill? A veteran that can go out and get you some quality innings. Not going to blow you away with velocity, but he does have a pretty strong curveball. He had a nice season last year, 3.86 ERA. Not bad for a 4-5 starter in the rotation. A good veteran to have in the rotation as well. But he did struggle in spring training this year, 9.35 ERA. Gave up nine earned runs, 14 hits, and only eight and two-thirds innings. So I do worry about him early on this season. Tyler Alexander, on the other hand, he had a fantastic spring. Pitched eight and two-thirds just like Rich Hill, but he only gave up one earned run, two hits, and eight strikeouts, so 1.04 ERA. And I think he's trending upwards in his career overall. He had a good season last year for Detroit, 3.81 ERA in 106 innings. Not too shabby for a guy that was at the back end of a pretty weak Tigers rotation last season. I think the Tigers can get at Rich Hill early in this one. I think they can take the lead after the first five. Don't trust the bullpen necessarily, so I'll just take Detroit in the first five innings of this one. Next up, we have the Cleveland Guardians taking on the Cincinnati Reds. And I think we have a sneaky overplay on our hands in this one. I know you've got two aces going at it in this one, Shane Bieber and Tyler Malley. Those are the projected starters. But I do think we're going to see a lot of runs in this one. Tyler Malley has just not been able to pitch very well at Great American Ballpark in his career. Last season was no different. He was 8-2 with a 2.3 ERA on the road last season. But at home, 5.63 ERA, a 1.481 whip. And a lot of that's because he's a power pitcher. And sure, he'll rack up a lot of strikeouts. But when his ball is made contact with... It can go pretty far. His average exit velocity on some of his pitches is not good. It's in the bottom 12th percentile already this season. So I do think if Cleveland can make contact, they're going to have success at the dish. Shane Bieber, on the other hand, not a guy that's known necessarily for giving up a lot of home runs. But in spring training, he pitched four and two-thirds innings, gave up three home runs. Now, I know in his first start, he didn't have any issues with the long ball with, against the Royals. But at Great American Ballpark, Really, sometimes pitching numbers can go out the window. This is the second most hitter-friendly ballpark, in my opinion, in the league next to Coors Field. I think we see some home runs in this one. I like the over. I think the total is a little too low for us. So give me the over in this one. Next up, we have the Seattle Mariners, the king of the one-run game, taking on the Chicago White Sox. And I'm going to take the Mariners here on the money line, getting the plus money, facing Vince Velasquez here. You know, Velasquez... In 2021, he had a 2.2 home runs per nine, and that's not going to get it done, especially against a, T a Seattle team that does have a lot of power bats. Uh, it's like Jesse Wink or Mitch Haniger that can certainly go yard at any minute. And uh, Vince Velasquez has just not been able to keep the long ball out of his arsenal. He does have pretty good strikeout numbers, but uh, we've just seen him struggle the last few seasons wherever he's pitched, uh, Philadelphia, San, uh, San Diego. And I do think it's going to be the same here with the White Sox. You know, I just think the value is all on Seattle here, a team that can, that does, that's very comfortable in playing in these close games. Uh, I think there's all the values on them here. So give me the Mariners on the money line on the road. I think they steal one from the Chicago White Sox in this one. Next up, we have an NL Central matchup between the Cubs and Pirates. And ladies and gentlemen, this has got to be my least favorite game on the board and, and for a lot of reasons, but betting is certainly one of them. Just don't see a ton of value in this game either way. Drew Smiley against Jose Quintana is the starting pitching matchup that's projected so far. Both guys, veterans of the game, but just haven't had a lot of success in recent seasons. Smiley did have a nice winning record of 11-4, but the numbers were deceiving there. 4.48 ERA and a 5.11 FIP. He struggled in spring training, gave up five earned runs, 12 hits, and seven one-third innings. Um, Jose Quintana on the other side, 6.43 ERA last season with the Angels and Giants, 11 ERA in spring training, 15 hits allowed, 4 home runs allowed, 11 earned runs, and 9 innings of work. So I think both of these guys are going to have another down year in 2022, and I just think Drew Smiley's the slightly better starting pitcher in this matchup, so I lean towards the Cubs 
on the money line, but not a game that's touching any of my money. Next up, we have the Oakland A's taking on the Tampa Bay Rays. Now, the Rays are steep favorites yet again. They've been pretty big favorite, almost minus 200 or more in every game that they played this year, and that includes this game. They'll be going with the bullpen game more than likely in this one. And we know Kevin Cash can really use his bullpen very well. We've seen it in the last few years. The Rays are basically the team that started the idea of an opener. And it looks like the A's are going to be using an opener in this game as well. Adam Aller making his major league debut. Guy that can get a lot of strikeouts. He had 9.3 strikeouts per nine in the minor leagues. Nine strikeouts in six and one third inning in spring training. But he does run into issues giving up a good amount of base runners, walks and hits included. He allowed 11 hits and seven earned runs in spring training, giving him a, giving him a 9.95 ERA in spring. Now, I think the Rays, when, you, when you're playing their type of game, using your bullpen, it's tough to beat them, especially at the drop. And I don't think there's a ton of value on this game overall, but if I was uh, going to make the play on this one, I have to take the Rays on the run line just because I, I just think they're the kings of the bullpen, and I think their lineup is going to be able to get to Oakland's bullpen eventually in this one. But this should be a pretty low-scoring game, in my opinion, so I also lean towards the under. Next up, we have a big rivalry game as the Mets take on the Phillies. And I'm going to take the Phillies on the money line in this one. You know, Zach Wheeler is going to be projected to face his former team in this game. He faced them five different times last season. He struggled in the first two starts against the Mets last year. But in the last three, he was absolutely dominant. And overall in the season, he was 3-1 and one with a 2.10 ERA against the Mets in 2021. Uh, he had a complete game shutout in one of those starts as well. So we know Wheeler, he's a workhorse pitcher, he's going to pitch a ton of innings, he led the league in innings pitched last year, going to get a lot of strikeouts, he pitched fantastic in the first half of the season, wasn't nearly as good in the second half, but still ended the season with a great below 3 ERA, and was number 2 in NL Cy Young voting. I think he does enough to get the win here for the home team. Tyler McGill, a pretty good option for the Mets, but I don't like him in this number 1 starting pitcher role that he was had to go in because of Jacob DeGrom's injury. He was slotted in as the number one guy. He's going to be facing a couple tough pitching matchups going forward. I think this is one of them. So give me the Phillies on the money line at home. Next game we have is the Toronto Blue Jays taking on the New York Yankees at Yankee Stadium. Now this pitching matchup, the projected starters we have are Yusei Kikuchi and Nestor Cortez. Cortez, a fan favorite for the Yankees. He pitched very well out of nowhere. Uh, last year for the Bombers, 2-3 and three record, but a 2.90 ERA, 1.08 whip. He did it with style on the mound. He had his little quirky wind-ups as well, and uh, it was just a fun guy to, to see pitch, and I think it'll be a lot of fun to see him pitch this season as well. Yusei Kikuchi on the other side, he was an all-star last year, had a, such a good first half of the season, but tailed off quite a bit in the second half. He ended the year with a 4.41 ERA, certainly not all-star numbers, and the spring training, he struggled yet again. Four home runs allowed in eight innings, 6.48 ERA in spring. So I do worry about him in this spot against a pretty good right-handed heavy Yankee lineup. We know the righties that the Yankees have. Some say, you know, they need more lefties in that lineup. Judge, Stanton, Donaldson now. So I do worry about Kikuchi in this game, especially at a hitter's ballpark like Yankee Stadium. I like the Yankees here. I think it's a good enough price to take them on the money line. Next up, we have the Milwaukee Brewers taking on the Baltimore Orioles. And I think this is a good spot to make some plus money with the O's at home here. I like them in the first five innings. I don't trust their bullpen enough to take them for the full game. But I do think that they take the lead early on in this one, facing Eric Lauer. He struggled in spring training. You know, six and two-thirds innings, ten hits allowed, eight earned runs, and a home run as well. I just don't think we can lay odds with them on the road, especially these big of odds. You know, even though the, the, the Brewers are a very strong team, uh, very good bullpen, we won't have to deal with the bullpen in the first five innings, and I think that's the, the way to go with this one. I think the Orioles bats, they, they played very well against left-handed pitching last season. They were actually top 12 in the league against uh, left-handers and Team OPS. So I think they score some runs early in this one and take the lead after the first five. Next up, we have the Miami Marlins taking on the Los Angeles Angels. And it wouldn't be a Ron's Rundown video without me taking the under in a Marlins game. We've done it virtually every game this season. 
and I like the under yet again here. He Jesus Lazardo, the projected starter for the Marlins, and he was one of the top pitching prospects for the Oakland A's a little while back. He didn't do very well in his first few seasons in the majors, ran into some issues, but he looked very good in spring training, very promising as well. 11 and two-thirds innings, so he got a lot of work in. 10 strikeouts, a .77 ERA. I think things are trending upwards for Jesus Luzardo going into this season. And man, the Marlins, if they can have another gem, a young starting pitcher on their hands, watch out for this rotation. On the other side, Patrick Sandoval is a guy I really like in the Angels rotation this season. You know, I, I honestly think the Angels are going to win this game, but their money line price is just too steep for me to even think about it. I just think the better play is on the under. So give me the under in this Marlins-Angels matchup. In our next game, we see the Washington Nationals take on the Atlanta Braves. And these games are usually pretty competitive. These series are as well. Um, and I, I think we should take a shot with the Nationals on the money line, getting the plus money. Not, not going to be the most popular pick. But, you know, Patrick Corbin's a guy that struggled last year badly. You know, 9-16 record, 5.82 ERA. And I worried about him going into the season. But I saw him in spring training pitch very, very well. Didn't give up a single earned run. Nine innings, ten strikeouts. And I watched him pitch against the New York Mets on opening day. I thought he did pretty solid as well. You know, I know he got the loss in that game, gave up two runs, but he struck out four batters and he looked a lot more in control on the mound than he did last season. And, uh, you know, the, the Braves, they definitely hit right-handed pitchers a lot better than they do lefties. Last season's team OPS numbers will prove that as well. Uh, so, you know, I think Corbin can do a good enough job here to keep the Nationals in it. And, uh, you know, these, like I mentioned, these, these series are always competitive. Last year was the case as well. I, I like the Nationals getting the plus money on the road in this spot. Next up, we have a pretty interesting interleague matchup between the Dodgers and Twins. I think this is going to be a pretty exciting series. But in this game, I say bring your glove to the ballpark. I like the over here. You know, Andrew Heaney and Chris Archer are the two projected starters for this one. Andrew Heaney, you know, he really struggled last year with the uh, Angels and the Yankees. 5.83 ERA overall. He had a 7.32 ERA with the Yankees, and in spring training, it didn't look much better. Five one-third innings, uh, 10 earned runs allowed, 12 hits, two home runs, 16.88 ERA. Uh, so I worry about him in this spot. Chris Archer on the other side, he struggled also in spring training. He didn't even get too much work in two and two-thirds innings, but in that one outing, five hits, third, three earned runs, and a home run as well. Um, you know, I think both pitchers are in trouble here. I mean, the Dodgers are naturally going to be tough to face any any pitcher. You know, this lineup is so loaded from top to bottom. We saw the Twins do a lot of damage on a left-handed pitcher in Marco Gonzalez in that 10-4 to Twins win uh, last weekend. So I think, the, uh, I think the over is a strong play here. I like a lot of runs in this one between the Dodgers Twins. Next game we have is the Kansas City Royals taking on the St. Louis Cardinals. This is a pretty ugly game betting-wise, as I just don't think you see too much value here with either side. You know, the Cardinals, I think, are in a better spot uh, getting that day off. I know the game was postponed on Monday against the Pirates. They were still at home, and uh, the Kansas City Royals had to play their fourth straight game against the Cleveland Guardians. They lost that one 10-7, so I do think the Cardinals are in a better spot. They are the home team as well. But you look at his starting pitching matchup, it's pretty even in my opinion. Daniel Lynch and Dakota Hudson, two guys that struggled a bit in spring training. Hudson with a 7.2 ERA in spring, while Daniel Lynch gave up 17 hits in 12 innings in spring training. Six earned runs and four home runs. So I really just don't love backing either of these starting pitchers. So I would have to take the lean to the over, even though these two teams aren't necessarily juggernauts when it comes to offense. I just can't get behind either starter. I don't think there's any value on the money line, so I'm going to take the over here. Next up, we have the Colorado Rockies taking on the Texas Rangers. Now, we saw the, the first game of the series start up a bit slow, not a ton of offense going on, but in this game, I think we're going to see plenty of runs scored from start to finish. I like the over here. Martin Perez and Chad Cole, the starters, the projected starters for this matchup. Perez, he's back on the Rangers. He pitched there for quite some time at the start of his career. Went to the Twins and Red Sox for a little bit, but now he's back in Texas. You know, he did pretty good in spring training, but didn't have a lot of work, only three innings. Uh, but last year, 4.74 ERA with the Red Sox. He does have a walk problem, gives up a lot of free passes. And I, I'm not big on that with starting pitchers. I think, you know, if you get into trouble with your location and you don't strike out a lot of batters to begin with, 
I, you know, you can run into a lot of problems. He had a 1.5 home runs per nine, which was the second largest in his career. And, uh, you know, I, I do think he gives up plenty in this one. And Chad Cole on the other side didn't have the best year with the Pirates last season. And uh, 4.82 ERA, 5.31 FIP. And he struggled in spring training as well. He only pitched five innings, but he gave up eight earned runs and two home runs. So I think both teams get on the board early and often. So I'm going to take the over in the Rockies-Rangers game. Next game we have is the Astros taking on the Diamondbacks. I'm going to be short with this one. I like the under here. I think we have a pretty good starting pitching matchup with Luis Garcia and Zach Gallen. I think Gallen is, him and Merrill Kelly could be the top two options for me in the Diamondbacks rotation. Looked pretty good in spring training, and I think he's got good stuff. So I think he's going to be able to hold the Astros bats down. Luis Garcia, also a guy that was a big surprise for me last year, pitched very well for Houston. Um, Diamondbacks bats have been inconsistent to start, so I think we see a low-scoring game here. I'm going to take the under. Next up, we have the San Francisco Giants hosting the San Diego Padres. This is going to be our last game on the board for Tuesday, and I'm going to take the Giants on the money line in this spot. I really like the pickup that the Giants made by getting Alex Cobb. We know that Kevin Gausman was lost in the offseason. He was grabbed by the Blue Jays. Um, and, you know, they, the Giants did a good job of replacing him by getting Carlos Rodon and Alex Cobb. Cobb was pretty quiet last year for the Angels, but he still had a really good season, 8-3, 3.76 ERA with a 2.92 FIP. He had a very good spring training. He pitched seven one-third innings, five hits, only one earned run, nine strikeouts. And the biggest thing for me with Cobb is when he was with Tampa and the Orioles, he really didn't have great strikeout numbers. But all of a sudden, last year, 9.5 strikeouts per nine. That was his career high by boatloads. And it was a big surprise for me and many others. And I think he's going to have a really good year at a pitcher's ballpark with the Giants, a good defensive team. Give me the Giants on the money line here. I think they can get to you, Darvish. I know he had a no-hit bid going early, but he still walked four batters in that game against the Diamondbacks. Giants lineup's much stronger, in my opinion. I think they get to him. Give me the Giants here. And that's it. Those are the games for Tuesday, April 12th. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. And leave us a comment down below with what your picks are for the games in Major League Baseball. Hope to see you guys soon. As always, I'm Ron Romanelli. Good luck.